what why ontologies ontologies are a way to represent uh, to speak about things uh, in a very powerful way so just like math is doing for phys for physics uh, what we want to do is to create is to use uh, another powerful language a computable language to speak about applied science knowledge uh, and uh, and data so if I uh, if you allow me to quote an Italian uh, director, um, um, uh, the quote is uh, who uh, when your language is bad, uh, your thinking is bad and your life is miserable. You have to care about word. You have to find the right words because words are important. So this is this is uh, right. And it's, and it's also the truth for uh, uh, for, for, for ontologies. In fact, ontology is like math. It's a very powerful language that, that can help you to do uh, very, very, very clever and important things, and especially is, is computable. So like uh, a math, ontology can uh, be an universal language that are sending linguistic differences. It is hard to learn, is able to perform logical reasoning, provides a model of the world, and when it works, it can be it can be hidden. So this is why we are we want to use ontologies. Um, I would like to tell you that developing the MMO, we ended up in concepts that have no uh, reference in human language. So you are struggling to find label to, re to refer to particular concepts. It means that the ontology that we are developing is a bit more detailed and more expressive than the, our actual language uh, is. So uh, since math has been uh, the, the, the key for the highest achievement in physics, what we want to do is to try to, to see if using a powerful language okay. Uh, dealing for uh, yeah. uh, knowledge management and applied science and, and industry can lead to the same to the same results. And in particular, this is very important because uh, uh, having a computable language is the key to connect a computable language uh, uh, understandable by human and by, and by and by machine is the key in order to achieve a, um, a, a successful interaction between humans and machine uh, that is foreseen in Industry 5.0. So. Um, but in order to use a language, you need to for this language to be a representation of the world. So there is a, a, always someone which is a human being because it's the one interested in in doing something, in, in, in performing an action, being it a being it a, a big enterprise or a small medium enterprise or, or, or a researcher, that look at the world, conceptualize it, and uh, and and write down. Uh, its description using an ontology or a language, and vice versa. If you, if someone reads uh, uh, someone expressed in an ontological way, needs to interpret it and to go back to the to to the to the, to the world. Using an ontology, you deal with concept. While using uh, in physics, usually you do this uh, by equation and, and and quantities. The problem is that there are several ways to look at the world, so you need to specify exactly how to interpret the the outcome of. Uh, um, a computation or how to um, how, how to be sure that you are uh, feeding your system with the right uh, information about the world um, and this is done when you uh, when you provide a conceptualization system like an ontology that is expressive understandable and near the, the needs of, of of the user in fact uh, we are not building black boxes like uh, like like simulation tool uh, that run from them for themselves. No, we are building tools that run for us. So it means that uh, what we give to the to the machine is something that we need to understand, that you are aware of, and we know what, what it means. And especially the output of the machine is it needs to be something that we can understand. So um, providing a a, um, a a meaning for the input and the output of a of a machine is essentially what. Uh, uh, what make a machine useful? So there is no need for a uh, for a von Neumann architecture uh, without input and output understandable by human beings. So, but now let's have a look at what uh, how an ontology looks like. This is an example of, of, of an ontology. You can see on the uh, on the upper right side the um, the 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 T box. So the abstract knowledge part of the ontology. So an ontology can store. Uh, uh, things about uh, um, um, the relation between between concepts, like for example, you can say that uh, if you have a, a water fluid, you need to have uh, uh, some water molecule part. For example, this is some of the abstract knowledge that you can formalize in an, an ontology through through actions. And um, 
in the mid right, you can find the A box. So when you declare that an abstract concept has been uh, concretized in, in the real world. So I have actually this flower, this car, and this car has this color and, and so on. So um, uh, that, that stands for, for the real world uh, for the real world object. But uh, um, uh, this type of knowledge can be formalized only if you have a viable uh, a viable language. And thanks to the semantic web efforts uh, in, in the last decades, uh, now we have a, a language that is uh, able to formalize uh, uh, this concept in, in in a way that it is possible to be understandable that, that is understandable by the machine and was understandable by by, by human being, beings. And in particular, I'm referring to the owl the owl uh, to uh, language. And in particular, what we are focusing on is the more expressive version of this language, which is owl DL that provides uh, reasoning capabilities uh, and also uh, with also uh, inferences from from existing uh, from existing knowledge so um an ontology can be seen uh, as a, uh, on the left as as a conceptualization of the world uh, uh, expressed in, in many different ways, the, the diagrams and so on. But when we want to talk to, to a machine, you have to, to formalize what uh, your conceptualization in uh, serializing in a file, like for example, uh, a turtle, a turtle file. So uh, saying that, uh, uh, how do we apply ontologies to, uh, to a particular uh, case? Here you can see um, um, uh, an example of uh, of what we did in, in onto trans and what we are using also in other projects uh, uh, besides onto trans in order to uh, let people express their needs uh, formalize conceptualize formalize their ontology and then use this ontology for uh, for, for knowledge management the idea is to start uh, 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 with industrial user and ask industrial user to provide a very simple conceptualization based on very simple concept, uh, in particular asking them uh, about uh, uh, the objects and processes that that are uh, that belongs to their user case uh, and all the quantities that they are dealing with in their in in their case. Then we we perform a graphical conceptualization that it is understandable also by the industrial user, and then the uh, and then the work of the ontologist uh, starts in, in when. Uh, where they try to to to, to translate uh, uh, this this simple conceptualization in something more more complex and understandable by by the machine, and uh, and you can see the translator act as a mediator between uh, the industrial user and the ontologist, uh, not being a real uh, uh, industrial expert, neither a real ontologist, but being something in uh, in between. So. Um, um, okay, let's skip the terminology because I would like to to to, to focus on something more later. So uh, we can. Um, uh, so what we ask to to an, an industrial partner or, or is is to start to uh, represent what they want to what, what they want to um, to analyze into uh, as as a connection between processes and objects. You can see here a a, a very simple. Uh, workflow in which uh, the, the the causal uh, timeline uh, goes from the left uh, to the right, uh, and you can see several objects that go through several processes and and so on. And an output of a process is the input of another, and uh, uh, and this is what uh, in the ontology we see is the the mero causal representation of uh, mm -hmm. of, of an innovation case. Then we ask uh, the, the industrial partner to start to list uh, the data. The, the, we can call it the properties of the physical quantities. So all the information that, uh, all the, the, the quantifiable information that can be um, that can be uh, used uh, um, to to characterize the entities in the uh, in the um, uh, in the in, in the case, and then. Uh, we focus on the user case, so we focus on uh, um, how you want to deal with uh, uh, with the tool that you have in order to achieve a particular result. Uh, for example, uh, we can, for example, um, uh, use a model that stands for a particular process that uh, takes as an input a particular set of data and provides you another set of data. So this is uh, so we ask industrial partners to. Uh, list uh, of the tools that they want to 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 include in the in knowledge representation in order to understand what are the possible routes uh, to solve a particular user case, and so we build uh, workflows 
that uh, uh, take uh, uh, existing data and provides new data. So it takes existing knowledge and provides new uh, new knowledge. In, in uh, um, uh, so also workflow like, like this. So the way in which you handle your knowledge sources, uh, being knowledge sources, databases, or, or modern software, is something that uh, uh, can can be and should be represented in a, in a user case. So let's make an, an, an example. Um, since uh, the ontotrans user cases and ontologies are uh, confidential, I'm using a, a, a particular, a, a very simple um, uh, example that uh, comes from my um, from my uh, um, research experience in in uh, nanoparticle syn syn um, uh, synthesis using plasma devices you can see on the, on the on the um, on the left uh, a plasma torch here a plasma torch in which you inject uh, micrometric powders into uh, a high temperature uh, discharge this the particle evaporates and then nucleates and form nano, nano uh, nanoparticles so the idea is that uh, i have this uh, uh, challenge which is uh, i want to control my nanopowder size so i build my uh, innovation case and you can see here a, 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 um, a, a diagram of processes and object uh, uh, referring to the entities that I want to focus on. And then you have a description of these processes and, uh, and object. And the next step can be to uh, characterize the, uh, each of these entities by, pro by describing all the properties that you attach to each of these entity, specifying uh, the unit, specifying the data type, specify the way in which they are uh, generated by modeling, by measurement, by guess or, uh, or, 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 or whatever. And the next uh, step is to um, create a logical representation of this actual user case. Hmm? So this, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, so sorry, this innovation, this innovation case is made of several things. So you can see here we have in yellow the abstract knowledge that is reusable for many, many, many uh, runs. And then in blue, you have the instances. So that represents one particular run. So what you can do is represent in your knowledge base uh, using an ontology, uh, every run you have, and you can navigate through, through every entity. For example, I want to uh, leave, I want to search in my uh, knowledge base uh, all the nan alum aluminum nanoparticles that I have produced, and then I want to, 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 to I, I select one in particular, and then I navigate through this uh, particular product in order to find out which device has been used, what are what were the parameter condition, uh, what was the the, the the laboratory technician that that did that and, and so on uh, another step important step is how to deal with the knowledge uh, uh, generator so how to how to how uh, how to deal with workflow that help us uh, to design and to better improve this process for example i know that i have a, a, a model that can uh, that can uh, model the, the the nanoparticle synthesis so i can represent a workflow in which uh, one input is a nanoparticle mean diameter and the output is a plasma power so this is a, a reverse uh, uh, approach to models i want to i want to uh, to, to obtain to 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 find to to set the optimal plasma powder in power in order to have the particular uh, mean diameter. Or maybe I can have a different user case in which I want to uh, do the opposite. So I want to know uh, which what will be my nanoparticle uh, diameter if I use a particular power and so on. So this type of, of, of user case, so the workflow used to, to, to predict uh, uh, um, the, um, the, the innovation case um, quantities, are represented as a, as a workflow in, in the ontology. But um, this is the first step, very simple step. Then ontologies uh, start, uh, needs to take all this information and build something uh, uh, a bit more complex uh, in order to create a, a very viable uh, um, um, knowledge uh, knowledge base. So um, what we need to, to, to have is a uh, ontology that has an adequate, adequate representation of power. So we need to have something that uh, that help us to say what we want to say in an easy and powerful uh, way. And the, and the computability of the system should be uh, high enough in order to let me uh, infer 
uh, or to impose a constraint that uh, are relevant for my for my innovation case. So what we, in order to to build this uh, language, uh, we started as EMMC uh, several years ago to think of an ontology that uh, uh, that is not based on common sense, like uh, most of the existing uh, top level ontologies are, but is is rooted on physics. In this way, we have a, a, um, a representation of the world that uh, is rooted on uh, I would say on principle that are at least for 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 us that, that uh, for we believers in science that are uh, i would say uh, if not absolute at least with a high level of uh, of of precision so we developed the the emmo ontology based on uh, um, a, a reductionistic and a physicalistic uh, view of of the world and uh, we decided to start with uh, uh, representing the uh, things as a you know collection, ag aggregation of fusion of elementary particles. So we decided to build a, um, a, a framework that can uh, let you navigate from a representation to the, to the macro level up to its decomposition, up to the standard particle level, including also the, uh, the, um, the representation of, uh, uh, of the physical phenomena, mm? not, not only a taxonomy in which you put things on, on a shelf, but also you want to describe how these things interact. This is something that it is uh, 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 possible to express in this uh, ontology. Yeah. Here you can see the, 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 the standard model um, the taxonomy that you find in the, in the MMO uh, ontology, yeah. just, to, just to show you the, uh, how, how it looks when you represent this diagrammatically. So uh, in order to represent the interaction, we have to dig a bit into, uh, uh, into, um, into quantum field theory and understand the basics of, of the, of the uh, so some fundamentals of, of uh, Feynman diagrams, which are a language uh, uh, with, with rules that helps you to represent the interaction uh, with a high level of precision, at least at, uh, at quantum electrodynamics uh, uh, level. And we translate these uh, uh, diagrams into uh, a mirror causality system that you can see here. Uh, these are the fundamental action of the EMMO uh, ontology expressed in first order logic, which is a language even more uh, expressive than, uh, uh, than LDL, but with uh, a higher computational cost. So here you can also see the uh, the fundamental of uh, taxonomy of the MMO in which uh, uh, in which we start from uh, quantum entities. The quantum entities can have an evolution in time and they become uh, elementary particles and then elementary particles interact and then you have causal system and all the uh, objects that we uh, deal with uh, every day are uh, under the causal system branch because they are uh, um, elementary particle interacting together. And so the EMMO is based on this uh, uh, basic, basic, uh, uh, um, very top level uh, taxonomy. Also, the mirror causality system that we developed uh, help us to uh, create a relation between macro entities, like, for example, a relation, and, and also let they make a, a space time emerge as a, as a, um, consequence of Feynman diagrams law, and uh, uh, we can uh, we can give the user concept like uh, um, like uh, constituent, like uh, behavior, like uh, um, uh, output of, input of, uh, added to, participates or contributes, and so on. And also relation, uh, causality relation like as, as next, uh, or uh, precedes or subsequent and, and so on. And also spatial relation like adjacent or uh, affecting communicates or indirectly communicates. So relation that uh, uh, provides a, um, a basic set of, uh, of representational tool to represent what, you, what you're dealing with in your uh, user case. So as I told you, the Feynman diagrams are the way in which we deal with the, with the, um, with the um, entities that you want to, to, to represent. Uh, but this can be done in a very, uh, very multi-scale way. For example, uh, you, you, you can represent uh, a complex system like a fusion reactor as a single entity. But if you want to dig a bit more into this uh, 
uh, description, you can represent a fusion reactor like being uh, uh, made of a plasma and a shield with some interaction. And the classical field in, in, the, in the MMO uh, ontology are represented as a stream of particle, real particle, that uh, that uh, transfer uh, information from one uh, to, um, entity to another entity, and if you want to dig a bit more, you can, uh, for example, for example, focus on the on the plasma and uh, and, and represent the Bremsstrahlung uh, uh, phenomena, or you can dig into into the shield and uh, um, investigate atomic ex excitation, for example, due to a gamma radiation uh, hitting uh, a, an atom. So this is a way in which you can represent. But if you want, if you want to, to dig a bit more, then you can you can go in the MMO up to, to, the, to, the, to the quantum world, and then you can represent entangled system in which uh, uh, particles are uh, represented by relation. In this case, we are talking about virtual particles and, uh, um, and, and, and quantum, a quantum field. So um, in this way, we can represent uh, with the MMO uh, things that can uh, um, dealt with uh, classical mechanics uh, or classical physical approach or quantum, uh, or quantum approach, uh, which is uh, um, in, material, in material science uh, is uh, uh, very often the case, especially when we're dealing with uh, uh, with uh, computational chemistry. So uh, in this way, we can represent all the entities between the, the, the standard model of particles up to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the universe, which is an important thing for if you want to deal with materials, you need to, to, to work <coughs> multi-scale by, uh, by default. And here you have a glimpse of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, material branch of the, of the MMO, in which we start from the very top level of the MMO, we attach, you see the, the next level is the standard model level in which we represent uh, uh, particles, uh, elementary particles. Then we have the physics part in which uh, uh, the interaction between the elementary particles starts to be uh, uh, so frequent that you can define them as a bond. Mm? And uh, then after this uh, fundamental physics layer in which we are dealing with elementary bonds and, and so on, we uh, we deal with materials. So, um, and uh, the, 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 the part of the MMO in which you probably will be more interested is the part that, uh, that starts from, uh, from here and goes uh, uh, outside the, you know, outside the screen, uh, uh, representing the, the materials that, that you have to deal nowadays. But this this uh, um, taxonomy is here just to tell you that uh, with the MMO you can uh, also the object that you have in front of you, so the, your, the glass of the bottle that you have in front of you can be seen as uh, in a reductionistic way as an aggregate of elementary particle interacting uh, together. Yeah. So uh, doing so, we speak the language of material science scientists. We provide an unambiguous representation of the world entities that can be translated easily in existing physics mathematical model. We provide a multi-scale representation of the world entities and provide a very strong foundation for materials-based uh, uh, taxonomies. But the ontology needs not to, to stop at representation of materials. It needs also to deal with things like, for example, the physical quantities, because we characterize things uh, uh, using numbers or using uh, uh, strings uh, that represent their characteristics, like for example, the color, red, green, blue, and, and, and so on, beside the numbers. So what we did was to uh, try to uh, do a better job, a better, at least for our, for our uh, purposes, than existing uh, uh, representation of, uh, of, of physical quantities. And we achieve that, or at least we think we have achieved that, uh, by separating the semantic from the syntactic part uh, in the representation of the, of the physical quantity. So what we did in, in the ontology was to uh, integrate uh, uh, almost uh, the, the, the entire part of the uh, vocabulary of metrology dealing with the, uh, the system of units. So you, you have in, in the MMO a, a taxonomy that uh, and relation that provides you a framework to represent all uh, potential system of units. Okay, maybe you can say, but I also only use international system of units. Uh, yes, but uh, the truth is that in the world, people are using a huge amount of non-SI uh, system. So the need for a comprehensive approach uh, to units is uh, uh, led us to represent a, a system of units in a in a, um, in, a, um, in a in a general way. 
Of course, we implemented also the system of units in, inside the MMO uh, by creating a taxonomy of uh, all the concepts that are pro, pro, uh, that are introduced in by by the SI uh, SI system, and also. What we did was to inter integrate also the international system of quantities, but in doing so, we separated the quantities as the meaning of a measurement to uh, to the um, to the units. For example, I can uh, express uh, what a temperature is in many many in, in many different ways, uh, and what I need to know about temperature is not the uh, unit but is the way in which I interacted with the system. So I can, uh, so if you ask me, uh, um, how was the temperature? And I can say, and then you understand that it was very hot. But what does this mean? What's the meaning of this? The meaning is temperature, because I interacted with the system uh, trying to, uh, to capture a particular phenomena that is physically explained uh, by the definition of what temperature is. So there are, temperature expression that are not uh, are not uh, necessarily connected to uh, to quantity so the idea is to separate the meaning to the to the to, to the units and uh, what we did was to integrate the uh, iso 80000 into the into the mmo uh, in order to represent the meaning of all the quantities that that we that that, that we can uh, deal with in an innovation case so when we look at uh, something like for example half a kilometer, we decompose uh, the information into uh, the data part, into the measurement unit part that can be decomposed into prefix and unit symbol, and but, but we wrap everything into the semantic meaning. Mm -hmm. The semantic meaning doesn't come from the from the from the measurement unit is something that uh, is part of of the uh, of the um, uh, of the entity itself because sometimes uh, you have no measurement unit in your in your data and you have to to deal with uh, a unit symbol that is uh, you know guessed or at least given for granted uh, so you have to uh, you have to deal with this in in a, in a flexible way um but let's have a look at at at, at, at the picture that uh, a lot of you already have seen uh, two times this will be the third time in in these three days but i think it's really it's really important because here you can see uh, um uh how everything is is packed together in the mmo if uh, in a case in which we want to represent uh, uh, a workflow that is about the fluid density calculation and that possess some input and possess some output. So the idea is that uh, in the abstract part of the ontology, of, of, of the ontology, the T box, uh, we want to represent the generical constraint uh, that uh, uh, applies to each of these uh, uh, class uh, of tasks. So this class of task uh, needs to have always only this this particular data set that is defined by having exactly these three types of these three parts and these three parts are characterized by a, a data type uri by a meaning they are leonard jones potential data for example the second one for example is uh, uh, is characterized for being a temperature so the meaning for being a real so the data type and for being expressed in Kelvin, so the unit of measurement, and so on. So in this way, uh, we represent a workflow, a very simple workflow made of one task. But of course, we can do something more complex. Um, and the same applies for for the output. But what we have here is uh, that uh, we have a branch that can deal with uh, the characterization of this simulation task. We can have mm, CFD task, MD task, and and so on. But also we have the possibility to connect the fluid density calculation sem uh, semantically to uh, sorry semiotically to the material that that uh, this uh, uh, simulation is about. So for in this case, fluid. Also, the data are connected uh, uh, semiotically to the materials to which they are about. So in this way, what we can do is to create a T box or so a generic uh, uh, an abstract representation of knowledge that provides information about. Uh, uh, about uh, the relation between between uh, uh, all the branches of of an ontology, so all the field of knowledge that you are dealing with when you are dealing with an innovation case in materials model. Then, when you if you are happy with the with the with the abstract knowledge and how it is formalized, then you can start to do your innovation case, so several runs, and then you can declare in the A box uh, all your runs 
and the runs can be, uh, of course, uh, uh, provide uh, if uh, can be declared the, the other other instances that uh, are connected to the, to, the, to the to to the actual data that can be stored within the ontology if you want, or can provide you information through metadata information about uh, the location of the data set that provides you all you need to know uh, for 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 this uh, entity to be characterized. And the T box uh, will always uh, help you. Because if you know if if you if you uh, if if you um, know that this individual is this particular data set uh, and it is located here, you know that this individual have this structure and is made of this data that has this meaning. So the T box provides you a way to map the data set uh, um, that uh, that in the A box uh, um, and the A box provides information about where to find it. So it, putting all of this together is uh, uh, is the way in which we obtain a knowledge management system. So uh, we can uh, put the ontology in a graph database, so something like uh, Stardog or GraphDB or other other uh, graph commercial graph database, uh, and then you can populate uh, the um, your graph database with instances, and then you uh, attach metadata to the instances. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a container, so the graph database for the T box, for the A box, and the metadata. Mm -hmm. uh, it is well known that uh, that commercial solution graph graph database commercial solution provides uh, a seamless integration with. Uh, uh, a huge variety of external databases. So in this way, it is possible to, uh, to navigate uh, uh, through um, the graph database and also query external database to grab the data. Mm. In this way, up, uh, implementing data federation in practice uh, and making your uh, data uh, fair because it will be very easy for, for a user to navigate the knowledge database uh, uh, and to grab uh, and to grab data from databases that are mapped by the graph database. If uh, uh, the technology is not available, then you have to do this manually, as is shown here in on the right. So if you have a file repository or an external database without an accessible API interface, so the, the graph database will provide information on how to reach, and then you will do this by by, by yourself. So this is the this is the the, the 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 idea. Of course, the graph database is not a uh, not not always a very nice and 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 friendly interface. And uh, but this topic will be uh, will be covered by Fajar in the next uh, uh, in the next meeting. So how to uh, make this experience uh, even more friendly. Uh, uh, than uh, uh, than it is uh, with with a standard graph the graph database. And what I want to mention also is that uh, this ontology, because we are talking about material modeling, uh, has been also applied to the uh, CIF, uh, uh, um, the crystallography information file uh, um, structure, and now it is possible for the MMO to use uh, this. Uh, you know, uh, multi-perspective approach in which uh, uh, syntax, uh, data types, uh, 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 semantics are put together, uh, is possible to represent a CIF data file in RDF. So we have a tool that can translate a CIF data file completely in an RDF file using an ontology which is EMMO based. So this is a very huge step forward because uh, a lot of material information are stored in CIF file and what we can do now using this, this approach is easily uh, um, uh, um, translate, um, automatically translate uh, the CIF knowledge into, into, an RDF, uh, uh, into an RDF format uh, that it is ready to be um, uh, semantically enhanced by, by the MMO and then connected to other uh, domain of interest that, that are, not, uh, are not necessarily crystallography. So the use of ontologies as human to machine, machine to human interface uh, requires uh, approach that facilitates the participation of industrial users in the conceptualization uh, uh, step. Human translators are needed to guide the use, industrial user to formalize the, the case. The MMO is a useful tool to, to, to represent the innovation case, um, design, execution, and also the, the documentation. And we can use this representation to populate a knowledge base uh, for automated decision making, workflow design, uh, and data fairness, and, and so on. So in layman terms, what we did, what, what, what we did, what I show you in this, uh, in this uh, presentation, 
is uh, how to take uh, you know raw data how to make them uh, being information by providing them a semantic uh, meaning how to create a relation between this uh, information using ontological relation and then how to use a knowledge base to have inside by searching for exactly particular concept but also it is possible to navigate through the to, to the concept in order to understand to, to in order to to reach what is called here wisdom so in order to to understand uh, um, how to distant uh, uh, entities can be related through um, through a set of uh, of ontological relation and this is uh, it for the for the presentation